Welcome to Atmosphere Digital, Rethinking Security in the Cloud. I'm Aaron Feigenbaum, Director of Security for Google Apps. We have this great panel here of experts through all across Google to talk about security. Information security has become such a hot topic with the uh, increase in cybercrime, the trends in privacy, the changes in regulations. It's something that businesses can't ignore. Enterprises all over the world are concerned about security. And to have a great conversation about information security, we brought in four different experts from all across Google, each a subject matter expert in security in their own specific domain. To my far left here, I have Tim Willis from our Chrome security team. Next up is Adrian Ludwig. Adrian is responsible for Android security. To my far right is Stefan Samoji. Stefan is a product manager in our security and privacy engineering team. To my immediate right is Suzanne Fry. She's the Director of Security, Privacy, and Trust for Google Apps Engineering. The move of businesses to cloud computing has really increased. The companies see the benefits of lower cost, but also the ability to innovate faster for users to collaborate. But one of the big areas of hesitation is security, right? Companies are not comfortable putting their own data uh, into the cloud. How would you respond to somebody that had that concern? Well, I think we're seeing a real sea change right now with respect to people understanding that the cloud is more secure than any on-premise solution. If you just think about it, mathematically, you've got all these different on-premise solutions and individual teams trying to do the right thing. And with any cloud provider, you have the locus of the best talent, the best expertise centered on making your solution secure and your data secure. If you take a look at our customer base, we have some of the world's largest banks. We have some of the most stringent government customers were FedRAMP certified here in the US. And the fact that we can solve for security for all of those customers is a great testimony to our capabilities. But in addition, we solve for something special. In talking to our customers, it's our ability to innovate and to bring new ideas to bear that help enable them to be competitive, productive, and truly novel and focus on the things that matter to them. That's part of our really special secret sauce, right? And I often say to people, at Google, security comes in two forms. It's both traditional cybersecurity, but it's also security against technological stagnation. That's interesting, because we don't usually think of that second one no. very often. We tend to think of the data security. That, that's great from a cloud perspective. How does that change in, in the Android or mobile world? Actually, I like the observation about being too focused on security to the exclusion of innovation. Um, I hadn't seen that phrase that way. Um, but I think one of the changes that we've seen in the mobile space over the last few years is um, companies have focused first and foremost on innovation, uh, Android being a, a great example of that. Um, but we've tied it to a security model that is how people actually consume applications and services, right? So um, we thought about you know, the web and the sandboxing model that was used on the web, and we incorporated that in the way we built application sandboxing. Um, and I think a consequence of that is cloud services are becoming more and more important. Most applications that are built for Android or built for mobile, regardless of your sort of mobile platform, are really cloud-based. Um, so I think those two were tied together um, because both of them were thinking about innovation first and foremost, and then the security sort of unlocked that innovation. So it seems like cloud is actually, a, and mobile is a reason for companies to move to those environments. Is there stuff that Google's doing that others really can't? I think it's important to think of the context in which we're talking in here. So we have a complex set of systems that we're dealing with today. They get more and more complex over time. Um, we also have adversaries with increasing levels of sophistication. So you've got that on one side, and on the other side we've got uh, IT managers having to defend their networks. The problem with defense is you need to defend everything incredibly well. Attackers only need to find one hole into your network. So I think that's where an advantage of moving to the cloud is that you have dedicated teams with robust experience I mean, Stefan and I were talking about this earlier, that some of the people who I work with wrote my textbooks in university. And it's one of those things that, you know, I get to work with these experts and that's all they do. They focus on security. And that's one of the huge benefits, in my point of view, moving to the cloud. That's great. Well, we're protecting data while it's at Google, but we actually do a lot of stuff to make sure the data is safe when it's not at Google, right? 
safe browsing would be a good example of something that we can do at very, very large scale where we actually believe that the right approach is make the entire internet safer. So we build systems that hunt around and find malware and find phishing and then we go and report this. And so an individual consumer can benefit from this because their web browser will let them know. In a cloud environment, enterprises can take advantage of this data as well and keep themselves protected. And we take this approach uh, through a number of different areas, certificate transparency being another example, where we're taking a look at the internet as a whole and finding ways to keep it safe at scale. So obviously in working with various experts, and, and you guys are all experts in your field, right? This encourages us to innovate and come up with lots of security innovation. Some of those really actually go beyond and change security and really move the needle from what users are, are used to. Maybe you can all give me one of those examples that uh, we've done. I'd like to talk a bit about security keys. Security keys have, are you going right. to? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh. Wait, you have my collection with me. Oh, you have nice. multicolored nice. ones. Almost Google colors. <laughs> you need a green uh, one. Yes. These keys are fabulous. Um, you know, for the longest time, you know, we have been talking about sort of two-factor authentication is, is critically important for most organizations to implement. And many you know, customers use you know, Google Authenticator and other apps like that to generate a one-time passcode. And those are great. They're certainly better than nothing, right? However, a hardware-based security key such as these is just quantum leaps ahead in terms of, you know, they're not hackable um, and they really do protect our customers from phishing in a way that, you know, um, basically the, the one-time passwords do not, so. I think that's an interesting point, Suzanne, especially talking about, you know, the not-so-glamorous side of the things that we do. Um, one of those things is encryption for me. Like, it may not seem incredibly innovative, but we're working really hard to make sure that all of our traffic is encrypted at rest and at transit. And one example where we're being open with that is our HTTPS transparency report. Now you can go to that site and you can see our progress towards our goal of 100% encryption in transit through all of our products. Um, again, uh, another example would be working with TLS 1.3. That's the next generation of transport layer security. Now it may not sound glamorous, but we're not only helping to implement that, we're helping author the next version. So that shows that we're in the mix and we kind of know what technologies are around the corner. Uh, a practical application of that would be progressive web apps. So these are low friction web applications which are designed to help increase engagement and have an app-like experience for customers and businesses. Uh, we've seen studies how that increases engagement and it's fantastic, it's easy across the board. Why am I talking about it? Well, TLS is actually a hard requirement for those apps. So it's one of these things where not only are we innovating, we're making sure that security is baked in from the get-go, and I think that's one huge advantage of Google. There's a couple elements about that that are interesting to me. One of them is, it's not so much that the security itself is innovative, it's about using an innovative product to make security available. Um, one of the things that we did early on with Android is, we thought about the platform stack, we're like, okay, you need to have verified boot, and you need to have encryption, and you need to have sandboxing. Those are all sort of, I think at this point, almost commodities for an operating system. Um, but one of the things that Google brought to bear was security services, right? It's going to be a cloud-connected device, and we're going to make all of those services available by default on all of the devices. And so we started thinking about how do you bind services into the operating system itself. Um, so we added things like safety net and verify apps where there are effectively hooks in the operating system um, where we can make sure that we're adding security sort of dynamically over time. And so we can innovate in security even more quickly than we can innovate in the operating system itself. Um, does anybody know that that's happening? Not really, yeah. um, but that's okay yeah. because they're safer and they're happier as a, as a result of it. So uh, we sort of, the same way that you guys are doing with TLS and um, progressive web apps, binding those two things together just kind of transparently and in the background. I'm going to two ends of that spectrum. There's also transparency. I mean, Tim, you were already talking about the HTTPS transparency report, but we've been doing transparency and we've been shining light on ourselves for many, many years. Uh, a couple of years back, we did the Safer Email Transparency Report where we were looking, but first of all, is there anything that we're doing that we could do better? And then having looked at that, what is the rest of the world doing? And it's actually moved the needle forward. We are now in a position to say, yes, as a result of shining the light and illuminating the greater situation on the internet, more people are using encryption for their email. Uh, it happens across all of our transparency reports where first we look at ourselves to see if we're doing the best job that we possibly can, and very often then we cast our gaze more widely into the outside world to see what else is out there and if we can help people improve things. Yeah, transparency is actually a really big part of moving to the cloud. I mean, especially we see that a lot with our enterprise customers, right? I mean, absolutely. 
if you think about it, like anything, if you don't know enough or have sufficient information, how in the world can you make a decision? Right, and how can, you, how can you run your business? And I do think that transparency has been one of the biggest blockers to adoption across all cloud products. We've been investing in multiple areas to ensure that transparency is, is front and center to what we do. Uh, we engage third party auditors right, to help ensure and, and provide certifications against certain standards like ISO 27017 and 18. Our FedRAMP process is also um, disclosed to the government and, and leveraged you know, uniquely in terms of making sure that across our company we are aware of vulnerabilities and, and addressing them quickly. And I think just in general providing information to the end user about whether or not you know, their employees have had a password violation or have had some suspicious activity or giving them greater reporting detail. And I, you know, I'm the first to say that we still have some work to do on the reporting front. And I think every cloud provider does, but we're working really hard to improve the degree that you know, an administrator understands everything that's happening within their company and can take appropriate action. So a lot of what you guys all talked about, whether it's transparency for our enterprise customers or for all users or some of the innovation in Android, we really wouldn't have expected years ago. Uh, I at least wouldn't have predicted that. You guys are all experts and very deep in your field. What would be your security vision? What's going to change? What's going to make our lives easier for our users? I think a lot of the security, as we've talked about before, needs to stay invisible. And in some cases, it's going to be a little bit counterintuitive. So a couple of months back, we released a product called OnHub, which is a home networking router. And one of the things that's particularly counterintuitive about it, but which is adding a lot more security, is the fact that it's cloud managed. So all the technology that we devise to protect our users' accounts, like Suzanne was talking about with the security key, all of that benefits the user because the Google account is the way the user starts to manage their device at home. So as we connect all the various pieces of our security puzzle, they all work together, and suddenly you have a device at home which is actually cloud managed and cloud secured, which is not the way it was even a few years ago. There's a distinct security benefit now. I'd like to talk a little bit about the elephant in the room with respect to security, which is this dynamic tension between access to data and keeping it secure. Right? Um, one of the very hard things for most enterprises is to say, listen, someone else is going to be the governor of our data, um, or steward of our data, perhaps I should say. And what is that company going to do with our data? And I referenced you know, audit reports and certifications that we commit to every year. However, um, machine learning is one of the most exciting things that's happening in the field of computer science today. And machine learning requires training data to perform. Um, and obviously, with customers sharing data with us, we could just take that data and go nuts, <laughs> you know, which would be irresponsible of Google and you know, would really kill our vision overall. But I do think solving that problem and putting our customers in control of what data we can use uh, to enhance the way that they work, to improve productivity, to reduce the costs, and to understand how competitive they are in a global landscape for a given industry. That's super exciting stuff. So I think finding you know, that gentle balance between making sure that customers can maintain absolute control over who sees their data, when, and uses it for what, it's one of the most exciting problems we have to solve because it's going to bring tremendous advances to mankind. Wow, that's impressive. I feel like I'm the guy who's going to talk about the boring thing. In <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really exciting that more and more companies are moving, like I think, more deeply into the cloud. I mean, for some background, like before I joined Google, I was a sysadmin and an IT manager until I caught the security bug, pun intended, and ended up uh, joining an incident response team. So a lot of what I was doing was rolling out to companies and departments who had been hacked and helping them clean up their networks, helping them you know, rebuild up their defenses, and kicking the miscreants out. And it's one of these things where, as we mentioned earlier, it's just going to get more and more sophisticated and it's harder that moving to the cloud actually buys you the Google security team in a sense. Like It gives you the protection that we're offering. It lets you not have to worry about that. Uh, and one of the great advantages of that is as an IT manager, you know, I don't have to worry about that. I can, I can sleep a little bit better at night knowing that you know, Google's got my back when it comes to security. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been interesting talking with folks and getting a little bit different perspective. I mean, even in the last minute or two, um, we've heard um, discussion about sort of hardware security, and we've talked about machine learning and pulling in data from different places. Um, Google, every conversation you learn a little bit something new. And I think that's one of the key things that the security industry is going through right now. Um, we're beginning to a point where there's enough maturation in all of our products, 
where there's enough data that's being pulled in, enough ability to analyze that data, where we can actually start to make good decisions, right? For generations, really, from a technology standpoint, we've been relying on assumptions about what good security looked like, you know, which things you need to be worried about, what risk is likely to hit you. But now that people are moving into the cloud, now that we have operating systems like Android, where we're trying to deploy security solutions across the entire ecosystem, we get a lot of data. We can analyze that, and we can start to make really good decisions. So I think that's uh, the thing that I'm most excited about over the next few years is we're going to get to the point where, as professionals, we can actually understand risk and make really good risk-based uh, decisions, um, which isn't something we've been able to do in the past. Uh, it's not something that's possible if you're not in the cloud, if you're not on mobile. Um, so that's what I'm really excited about. The one thing that's really in common with everything everybody said is having a large security team that's capable and has the expertise to really ingest all that, to be able to do the things for you on the cloud or to use all that data that now we have to make products more and more secure or to develop that uh, machine learning. So hopefully this was a, a good insight for everybody to, uh, to hear what some of our security leaders at Google are thinking about, uh, what they're working on and uh, what they're working on in the future. So thank everybody for, uh, for taking the time and listening in to us. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you.